And then we have controls. Um, I spent half my life working on air conditioning controls, and you'll, you'll have picked up from a lot of what we're talking about in all the various technologies that control is really important. Um, so getting the controls right is fundamental. But the starting point for that is having a functioning control system. Now, most control systems are capable of doing most things, but I will make some exceptions. And my favorite exception here is a pneumatic control system. Pneumatic controls, which were very fancy and, and, and uh, popular up to the mid-90s, um, use air as the primary medium of control. Okay, so the control decisions are made on a, using little pneumatic, almost you could think about them as being pneumatic computers. Um, again, why are they a problem? Well, partly because there's no skill left in the market for managing pneumatic systems. It is a 20-year-old technology, um, and the world has just moved on. And when these systems get a bit tired, so they, they start acquiring oil in the pneumatics and leaks and things like that, they just fall to pieces. So you have a large control system that basically is doing random dial control for you. You're not going to get effective control from the pneumatic system, so it needs to be replaced. Um, any control system, though, is only as good as what you write into it. So all those control algorithms that we've been talking about for the different technologies are incredibly important. And then how it's commissioned. So I said it was going to operate like this, does it? The number of times I've been involved in projects where we said program a two degree dead band and the controls engineer has gone on and not programmed the dead band at all. So actually the commissioning and making sure it's done correctly is incredibly important. And never forget time of use control. It's the easiest and simplest thing to get right. And that's just not running stuff when you don't need it. And it amazes me the number of buildings that waste huge amounts of energy servicing empty space. Um, other bits of air conditioning technology, optimizing the economy cycle. What's the economy cycle? That's using outside air for cooling rather than the chiller. In Melbourne, incredibly important for a lot of the year, we have outside air that can be used very effectively as a cooling <coughs> medium. Um, that said, on those days when it's really cold and really hot, we don't want to be running too much outside air. So you need to get your minimum outside air, the stuff that you provide to stop people from suffocating, down to the right level. The other thing is to consider is air filters. Keep them clean, um, because as they get dirty, the pressure drop increases across them. As the pressure drop increases across them, your fan has to work harder to get the air through. OK, and the energy consumption goes up. Um, consider the use of high efficiency filters. Now, High efficiency is an ambiguous term with filters. It can mean a filter which is very efficient at removing dust, but what I'm talking about is a filter which gathers dust and does not increase its pressure drop enormously. And Eurovent in, Euro in, in Europe have just introduced a standard for rating the energy efficiency of filters based on how much their pressure drop increases as they get dirty. And there is a significant difference, a factor of two between the best and worst. <coughs> 